Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to teach you different methods with which you can self-excite Universal Motors at home. The project was requested by the previous video contest winner, Julian. So guys, you will find four wires coming out of the Universal Motor. One, two, three and four. Two of which must be connected to each other and the remaining two must be open for connection to run this motor and guys you are also going to need this 12 volts to 220 volts inverter or DC to AC converter so guys first comes the connection of the bridge rectifier okay so what you have to do you have to connect the AC terminals to any one of the two terminals that are left out meaning not connected now the other AC terminal will remain open add to the DC output terminals this inverter or DC converter will be connected okay mind the positive and negative now with that being done I will use this high capacitance capacitor bank you can see a single capacitor is rated at 110,000 microfarad at 15 volts DC now guys connect the negative which is this black one negative to this black of the universal motor now to the positive you have to connect the left out wire of the rectifier now comes this 5 volts 2 amperes mobile charger you see 5 volts 2 amperes so I have to connect it to the inverter okay connected now there are two left out pins black and red to which I'm going to connect this extension okay with red being positive and black being negative and connecting it accordingly to the capacitor bank black to black negative red to red positive now all I have to do is start the setup by giving power supply to this motor and that is going to run this universal motor and let's see what happens because DC motor speed controller okay that's the EC side this is the DC side to which I'm going to connect the terminals of the treadmill motor always turn off the supply first make sure at the start the speed is at zero this is the bulb that will be connected to the terminals to which this inverter has been connected yeah this one I will connect afterwards okay let's go Well, there was some problem in the wiring. Oh, yeah. you see, the water is turned on. Although at present it is showing low battery, but in few moments it should gain uh, light charge, and uh, the low battery light should go away if it is working. It seems like it is working. The light is going. I'm going to give you a closer view. Yeah. You see the low battery light is going away and the main light is getting brighter and brighter. Uh, somehow the light just turned off. When I'm touching the terminal then the light of the inverter is glowing brighter. I don't know why is that. You see it is glowing brighter. <laughs> Let's connect it permanently to this point. It seems excited but it is uh, like getting dim and dim and dim and turning off. I think the bulb has got fused. Guys now what I have done is to one terminal coming out from the universal motor I have connected the rectifiers terminal and the other also I have connected the rectifiers terminal okay. And the output of the rectifier DC is going to feed the inverter and this 5 volts charger is connected here that is going to feed this excitation capacitor which is going to excite the universal motor so this is another way that I'm going to try whoa it is getting auto excited huh what the hell I think I'm seeing something here oh the wire is hot 
I didn't even like charge the capacitor bank and everything is like smelling over here. I think I should limit the feedback voltage from the capacitor to the universal motor. I think this one should do. Let's try this. Bulb is not glowing meaning that there is no charge in the capacitor bank. Let's see if it can get self excited like it did before. Whoa! <laughs> yeah! Oh, yes! I seriously did it guys! Yeah! Oh. This is a self excited universal motor guys. Self excited. No battery given. Automatically excited. Now this is going to be the third or fourth of my unbelievable inventions. I knew that if I am going to set a resistor feedback, it is going to work. No excitation, not needed. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yeah. That inverter is feeding it. You see that it is growing better and better. And in some time that low battery voltage indication is going to go out or some of the wire might just get burnt because at present it is heavily loaded <laughs> and this thing is not present on YouTube anywhere on the internet that's the first and I'm the one to do it oh yeah cool <laughs> yeah let's measure the voltage That is only one volt charged. Let's measure the voltage across the bulb. Oh, the wire is super hot, guys. This is connected to that. Okay, so I, I can get the voltage from here. One terminal over here and one over there. Yeah, at present I'm getting somewhere around 5.27 volts. If I get, go a little bit faster on the treadmill motor, obviously the bulb is going to glow a little more. Would you like me to do that? Say yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is working. Let's turn off the lights and then check it out. Let's see how bright it is. <laughs> Let's turn it off. You see it's turned off and it is still glowing because of the circulating magnetic field. I seriously just love electricity and there is so much to learn still. Now guys, you all must be thinking that this method is super complicated. Well, the good news is that there is another shortcut, super shortcut in which you are not going to need any of these. Okay, so for that, I'm going to use this 12 volts UPS battery. Next, what you have to do is run this motor with a DC source, not an AC, but a DC source. Okay, you can see that it has started running. Initially, when it was running on AC, the residual magnetism was zero because of changing magnetic poles. The pole which was initially north became south and then again north. So there was zero residual magnetism. But now that I've fed a DC source to it, the poles have a residual magnetism. Now using that residual magnetism, I am going to self excite it without any external source. This is a bulb, you see, in Ganderson bulb. Okay. Let's connect its terminals. Now let's turn the supply on and see if it gets self excited. Okay. <laughs> you see that it is self excited now. Cool, right? If you have a DC source, you can attain that residual magnetism like which is present in car alternators and when you have done that then you can get it self excited but not 
if it is continuously running on AC source. No other wire given, okay? Super bright bulb. Cool. Let's measure the generated current. Okay. Three point seven zero amps. DC amps. Ha! <laughs> cool, right? So guys this is the petrol engine you see it still looks nice so yeah let's open it further and guys finally now I can see the generator you can see the copper windings Now guys, I was waiting for something interesting and I found it. This you see is a high voltage coil two-sided. 
one pole north and the other pole south. Now if there is pole changing then it will produce high voltage that is going to feed the spark plug and thus burning the coil and running the engine. So this uh, coil high voltage coil pole changing technique is obtained with the help of permanent magnets super powerful. You see the poles. I believe this is the main pole you see. Yeah. Great, really nice. Not sure about the other pole. Yeah, this has really no magnetism, so I don't think that it has any polarity. I don't know what kind of system it uses to excite this magnetic pole. Anyways, yeah, let's get forward to opening the rest of it. And guys, you wanted to watch the treasure? Well, here it is. guys finally this part is out and all that is left is this, uh, the petrol engine and the generator itself the generator fan So guys, you cannot believe what I'm watching here. It's just the best treasure I've ever seen. And guys, here what you are seeing is this rotor. The two pole rotor with super high current winding. You see, good bearings. This is one pole, okay. And this is another pole. Looks so nice here high quality bearings with a groove for placing this long screw through it and finally this armature winding that is responsible for generating high amount of current although guys the slip rings and brushes are not visible on this side then possibly they are on the other side of the uh, rotor and yes there is one bad part for this generator despite of the treasure is that uh, the petrol engine is in direct contact with the generator meaning they are sharing the same metallic body you see even if I separate this still the engine part is attached to the generator inside okay so it is going to create some difficulty but still I will have to do it And guys now comes the treasure part one the high voltage very high voltage flyback transformer two poles the separate poles type north and south let's keep it aside
have seen the inside part of this looks really nice seems like a piston let's move the shaft and see what happens oh it's coming back and forth ah yeah, that's cool and it's very smooth oh pretty good you see actually i'm doing this it is coming back and forth nice and guys when i'm placing my hand like this and turning the shaft like this it's sucking my hand in okay yeah yeah now ah. you see it went inside and created a circle one could make a pretty good air compressor or air pump with it pretty big area for suction and i also have a pulsar 150 cc engine that might also contain something similar so this seems interesting so i'm also going to uh, open up that and now i have to open up this screws now it was uh, very tight and i had to use uh, one more person to help me out in opening this i've loosened it up so that i can open it easily in front of the camera so let's open it you see it's opening pretty good because i've already loosened it up yeah this is the large metal and one magnetic piece now that i believe this entire is the south i don't know how they maintain that because this is the only magnetic piece here you see and the rest it's not magnetic i mean it is but it is distributed south or distributed so uh, north pole while this side is concentrated okay anyways let's take this out also and you see those hidden bolts yeah i also have to open them you see this part it's a two stroke engine wow something similar to a flywheel evenly distributed and with a magnet pretty good huh the final motor shaft oh, it is pretty tight to move uh, yeah and now the three bolts are open and guys now i believe that there is going to be a lot of engine oil although i drained all of it almost all of it but still there there always some left inside so let's see how much it is yeah it is still very tight let's open it wow <laughs> now comes the treasure the real treasure fully metallic beautiful gears although it is going to be really difficult to run them yeah i will show you though with the inside view you see guys beautiful gears heavy duty and in perfect condition very nice oh well i'm just loving it wow and there is still a lot of engine oil as i said i will have to uh, drain all of it Okay. And guys not just that there is also a beautiful amazing high quality and without any problem a perfect running bearing that it could be used in many of my future projects Yeah it's running really smooth Wow pretty good guys very nice Yeah, see, 
so very good looking pretty smooth running and in every way a very good engine so there is no point in destroying it I'm going to use it as an air compressor in one of my future upcoming projects opening it is only going to destroy it because the generator and the two stroke engine both are connected to each other with a same body the only way to separate them is uh, to cut off this aluminum body which is uh, not at all useful at least for me and for my upcoming projects But guess what guys I'm going to use for this project is an inline carbon filter lying around dead one scrap. Well guys, it seems like that I'm going to use this DC motor. So guys, here as you can see that the surface cut is a little uneven, you see? Now guys, for precision cutting, I have this super amazing milling machine, okay? So yeah, let's first clean it up. Alright, alright.
So guys as you can see that it is pretty stuck good yeah now it's time to install it finally there are four wires which means that uh, this is a DC clutch motor this is the clutch and uh, the two thin wires are responsible for operating the clutch and the remaining two thicker wires are for operating the DC motor I have used some cushioning to uh, reduce the vibration as well as I have added screws of equal length to further minimize the vibration plus the zip ties to hold this uh, like impeller piece steady well guys here as you can see that it is uh, super cloudy and uh, the sun is fairly available but still I am going to use uh, the solar panel wires that I have here you can see that when I run it, it has started running but there is no movement over here because of the DC clutch action. Seems like it's working fine. Whoa! Super guys! Little water is left. <laughs> See, guys, superb water pump. 